our next presenter. Um, I was absolutely delighted to welcome you, Life, as, as corporate members of the association. And we've agreed that we'll work exclusive, exclusively with them over the course of the, of the next 12 months to give them an opportunity to develop you know, their relationship with our members. And I'm, I'm sure that you will all embrace that. I'm looking forward to hearing what, um, what Barry's got to say as head of broker distribution about what makes you life different to some of the others. And, and I think that will be fascinating for us. And as importantly, how he believes that they can put the life back into our customer conversations. So Barry, over to you. Thank you, Stuart. And thank you everybody for logging on. Uh, quite a big audience, so that's great to see. I'm just going to fire up the presentation. Bear with me a second. <clears throat> so before I start, you're probably wondering why there is a giraffe suspended by balloons on the screen. All I can say is it will come clear by the end of the presentation. What I'd like you to do is imagine a world where your client conversations were no longer about missing data, claims and renewals. Instead, the focus switched and was about culture, technology and well-being initiatives. And there was no extra hassle. While you ponder that thought, I think I'll give you a quick introduction into me. So I'm Barry. I'm head of broker distribution at ULife, as Stuart said. I've got 15 plus years experience solely in group risk, which to be honest, makes me feel a bit old now. <laughs> um, but I'm also the chairman of the Raising the Profile Committee at GRID. I was supposed to be doing an Ironman this year. However, that's been cancelled. And if I'm quite honest, I'm quite glad because when I started doing the training, it's quite excruciating getting up at 4am to go for a cycle before you start your day job. <laughs> that being said, I still do enjoy cycling. I'm a Chelsea fan, which means I've probably got a third of people that really don't care, a third of people that think, oh, that's great, and a third of people that um, are now not going to be my friend ever again. <laughs> anyway, that's enough about me. I'm really proud and really excited to be the exclusive partner of Amy for Group Risk in 2021. What does this mean for you? Today, we're going to talk to you about market trends in the world of employee benefits and what that means for your clients. Plus, I'll share some information about ULife and what we do, as well as reveal a very special offer for Amy members. Are your clients proactively looking for new solution in benefits and well-being, or do they need some help? This is what we've noticed in 2020. So firstly, employee well-being is now a mandatory concern for employees. The effects of mental health are more apparent than ever. There's been a huge shift towards a digital solution as a result of COVID-19. In fact, there's been a surge for wellness apps in the past two quarters, as we could probably all expect. And employers have a responsibility to look after the financial protection of their employees and their families. Based on research from Corporate Advisor, we saw that 100%, yes, 100% of respondents said they were likely to put wellbeing services into their package from 2021. Whereas only 15% said private medical insurance. This isn't a huge surprise to us. We wanted to make you aware that with group risk insurances, they're more commonly sought after and could go a long way to bridging that gap in your client conversations. But what drives these changes in behavior? We know the traditional drivers. So death of an employee, again, as soon as somebody dies within an organization, one of the first things you think is, did they have insurance? Well, it's probably not one of the first things you think, but one of the things that you think about is, was their insurance in place? A long-term absentee, 
straight away, again, if somebody goes off long-term sick, you just hope that there's something that was in place to help them get back to work. Again, with serious illness, the same kind of questions are alive. And now mental ill health. If we take it five or 10 years back, it wasn't so apparent that this even existed to the level that it does now. But now so much effort and time is going into helping people that have a mental ill health or suffer from mental ill health to try and get these people back to work. But then there are new drivers. Firstly, just we expect more, both as employees and just as people. We expect more and we want things to be accessible. All COVID-19 has taught us one thing, there are new ways of working. Like even now as we sit here, there's nobody or very rare amount of people that are going to be in an office working unless it's a home office. I personally am sat in a new house, it is in destruction all around me. <laughs> but this little bit has been painted specifically for this event. <laughs> but the thing is, this is it, it's not going to go back to the way it was. These are the new ways of working. We were talking just before we started and to start work in the dark and end work in the dark is going to have an effect. I'm not gonna go any further into that because I feel like it goes into Ed's presentation. <laughs> and then finally, the pressure on budgets. And I'm sure that there's, when you have your client conversations, you'll sit there and people will say, and I'm sure you hear it, we want to do something in well-being, And it's always something, or a lot of the time it's something. They don't really know what they want to do, but they know they want to do it. And then you start to talk about what's available. So talk about the pro products and services that are available in protection and people get excited and you get excited as the advisors and the client gets excited because they know that they can help people. And this is something that happens when you say the words well-being. The well-being makes you feel more positive. You think of positive connotations of how you feel. When I say insurance, not so much. If we can bridge these two worlds, what do we get? Finally, the pressure on budgets and the end of that conversation is normally how much is your budget for well-being? And the answer is normally we don't have one <laughs> or it's very limited. So if we could do anything to help this space, that's all we'll be targeting. We saw earlier 100% of people want to do something in well-being. If we were to go and ask those people, what do you want to do? I feel like our numbers are going to roll down quite substantially with people that don't know what they want to do, just know they want to do something. Inclusivity is a never, another, excuse me, another very important point. Across all businesses now, we have of all sizes, we have people who are at home, that suddenly it doesn't matter the hierarchy of the business, everybody's at home kind of in the same boat and people want to be treated the same, like people have the same pressures, they're doing the same things and the same stresses. So how can we bring in an understandable benefit that goes out to everyone? We've built ULife to be available to all employees. Group risk products are predominantly for every employee by design. And through digital distribution through the ULife app, we're able to deliver and communicate with employees regardless of their job titles. Group risk has traditionally worked well in the enterprise market. The enterprise market we class as 250 employees plus. That market currently represents over two billion pounds worth of annual premium. We built ULife not to predominantly focus on that two billion, but to grow it to three billion and then to four billion. We want to grow this market. And we want to make group life assurance understandable and accessible to all businesses, regardless of size. We know from our research that PMI traditionally has worked best in those small and medium sized businesses. So we want to work with you. And it's one of the reasons we've partnered with Amy is to deliver an inclusive offering that gets to this untapped market. We are perfectly aligned to meet these changing priorities and I'm going to show you how. Old life assurance. We have to admit, life assurance generally is boring. This infographic will show you one of the first policy documents on 1808. 
If we think about what's happened since that point as an insurance product, it does the same things. What we've seen is a host of auxiliary benefits be added in, but with really low take-up rates. Employee assistance programs that hit a 5% take-up rate, people rave about, as in it's like, this is really, really good. Whereas actually in reality, are we saying that only 5% of each workforce really has like a, a problem, like have, never have a problem with stress, don't want to talk to somebody about something? I personally don't believe that that's the case. What I believe is the case is that it's not accessible. People don't know how to access it. And that's what we do here. We're trying to reinvent life insurance. So I introduce you life. First and foremost, it is insurance. So the important aspects are that people are insured. So we offer all three product lines. By all three product lines, I mean group risk. So that's group life insurance, group income protection, and group critical illness. What we wanted to do though, is underpin it with a full employee assistance program. So each contract has a full employee assistance program included, and also virtual GP services at this present moment in time. So, so powerful to be able to speak to a doctor on the phone within 20 minutes. It just makes it so much easier and accessible. The next two pillars you'll see here are rewarding living, living and inspiring life. We want people to think about their employee benefits in a different way. We want them to think, okay, I have life insurance and actually it continually is giving back. And as an employer, you can see that the return of investment. What do we get from our life insurance program at today's date, assuming nobody dies? Not an awful amount. If we can turn that on its head and improve lives, then suddenly we are in a different field completely. So we reward living by partnering with some of the biggest brands that you can see. So Amazon, Nike, Fitbit, Calm, et cetera. But we want people to make these small behavior changes and we work with our well-being advisor, our chief well-being advisor, Dr. Rangang Chatterjee, to build in a plan where you make small behavior changes, which will make you happier and healthier. And then we use gamification to help people or to get people to continually go in and make these changes. So we know that if you make a small behavior change and you repeat it, it becomes a habit. And as it becomes a habit, it then pushes through until it becomes just the norm. So doing 10,000 steps a day at this point, if you do zero, might seem really difficult. So if we rewarded you for doing a thousand steps per day, and then you thought, oh, if I'm doing a thousand steps continually, how much harder will it be for me to do 2000 steps? And then you start to push up and we reward people by working through the levels and completing these wellness challenges. I won't go into more detail on what the app looks and feels like, but you will obviously talk to us after <laughs> and we can go through it then. I want to demonstrate what kind of value this could look like. So this will be twofold. Firstly, we'll look at the individual and there's three main sections here. This first section is looking at some of the wellbeing partners. So if you utilize some of the well-being partners we've got, what kind of value that adds? I'm not going to focus on all of them, but just looking at the bottom one there, for every employee that has a ULife, that is insured with ULife, you get the ability to write an online will, either single or jointly. So we'd see these figures here. If somebody needs to use these auxiliary benefits, such as the EAP, dietary advice, then here, again, we can put a price on these. And finally, the proactive support. So actually doing the steps, practicing mindfulness, because you life is not just about physical well-being, it's also about mental well-being as well. And enjoying the challenges, streaks, and getting these bonus U coins, then suddenly we can see a whole load of, um, you can see that you get quite a lot of benefit as an employee by doing things that, you probably, some of these things you already have, you just don't know how to access them. We can also do recommendations. And this is where the fun begins, I suppose. There's going to be certain aspects of the plan that you think, oh, I'd like to do that, but you don't know how. So things like an online health check 
or, or getting a fitness program. These things are included within the ULife offering. When we look into the HR insights for the employer and the HR partners, we can actually give them data back. Important to note at this point, the data is always going to be anonymized. It's never going to be, this is what Lisa is actually doing. It's always going to be whole company, certain areas, things like that. But the idea of this is, okay, it's very well collecting this data, knowing how many steps people are doing, knowing what time of day people do mindfulness. What do you do with that? So firstly, we'll give insight and say, this is what we've seen. And these are the trends we've seen. And then we can react to the trends by working with you as the broker and also with the client as a three to say, okay, for instance, if we were to see, you know, a, a high level of mindfulness activity done really late at night or really early in the morning, we could say there might be a potential stress issue here. And then we could surge Ucoin. Ucoin is our virtual well-being currency and surging much like you would surge with Uber apart from the negative connotations of it being more expensive. <laughs> so it literally just be, we'd surge the U coin and give people more for doing so. The idea of this is we start to give back. We start to learn about people so that later down the line, we can use that positively to affect the behavior of the employees and make them happier and healthier at the heart of you life is the employee. We built our proposition with them in mind and then filled it back up. We love a graph <laughs> and we'd love to show you what kind of information we can pull. So this is from lockdown one. What we can see here is before lockdown, this is when the challenges were done. So we see between the hours of six and eight, people were doing walking challenges, mindfulness challenges, etc. What we saw with lockdown, and we expected a slowdown, as you can imagine, but actually it was just the time of day that changed. We saw that people started to do things in the middle of the day, probably to get out in the beautiful weather that was there. And that, this for us was a good learning because what it taught us was, okay, people still think about physical well-being, they still think about mental well-being. It's just now where people are walking to work and things, now they want to get away from the desk. So could we surge rewards at this point to get more engagement and more data that we can then use to speak to the employer? Of course we could. The graph surrounding, and I'll send this to you, we'll just talk to you, we'll just show you when challenges are done, what challenges are done and things like that. I'm more than happy to supply a dummy report if you need be. Finally, as we said, more, we're so happy to be the exclusive partner with Amy and we really want to work with you guys as much as possible to try and A, stimulate different conversations with, with, with your clients, but B, un, unlock this SME block of business that currently hasn't got insurance. And if we can do that together, fantastic. As such, we have a special offer, which is six months free of the Calm membership for every employee that is introduced through an Amy client. Thank you very much. I think you're unmuted yet. <laughs> am I unmuted? Yeah, I am unmuted. So thank, thank you for that. Um, one of the things that, that we can see from, from your presentation and from conversations you and I have had previously is that that you life proposition uh, has a different approach in that risk and protection area which builds a value that that other alternatives may not provide how can we get that message across firstly to the intermediary advisor but secondly how do we get it across to the consumer to the purchaser and i suppose with that it really comes down to it's like an education piece right so we've got something relatively new. So we want to get that out there as, as much as possible. So if you can get us in front of clients with you, we can talk through this, the package as a whole, if that makes sense. We don't, we don't need to talk about product per se. That's just the vehicle to bring the wellbeing initiative into play. Yeah. There's, as I said, there's three or four there. Um, 
your membership would be talking about private medical insurance. So you've had a company that's done something along these lines previously join. So some of these conversations were already being had, but we find, and I'm okay to be wrong with this, but that private medical insurance doesn't always go for all staff. Whereas group life insurance, we generally find that will be for all staff. So we can bring this inclusive benefit to all employees. We can really roll it out. We can be heavy on marketing. And I know the marketeers, and I'm sure there'll be a couple of you life marketeers on the phone. Can't wait to get involved <laughs> with you guys to show them how to use things, when to use things, even to roadmap with, with benefits that aren't ours. Okay. Um, one last question for you just before we wrap up then. Risk and protection products are seen more complex when you compare them to PMI and health cash plans. Is, is that valid or are we sort of worrying unnecessarily? And I suppose that's the beauty of this partnership, right? If it is perceived to be a valid, valid remark, then use us. That's the whole point of us here. We, this is our market. You know, as I said, I've, had, I've got quite a lot of experience in this market. The, um, the people that we're looking after, Amy, so our broker consultants as well, have got a lot of experience in this market. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone and just say, okay, what's this? And then we can, we can talk about where the, where the products match, where, which bits look like they're complex, and we can take the complexity away. We're more than happy to A, teach about our market, but B, learn about yours. So you'd be quite happy to sort of support some of our intermediaries in a way who perhaps are, are less experienced to help them get into this market because there is undoubtedly a revenue opportunity. And the other bit about it is that, you know, if you're looking at a well-being proposition for a client, you're probably not just looking at their PMI and health cash plan. You're looking at the much bigger picture. So that's, that's great. Thank, thank you very much for that. Um, One last point before I go, well, because I didn't tell you about the giraffe. <laughs> oh, right. <yeah. laughs> so, yeah, the reason that there was a giraffe is because uh, the giraffe is like our mascot. And it's our mascot because the giraffe's got the largest heart of any land animal. And we're all about loving being you and being the best version of yourself. Excellent. Well, a perf a perfect